species. I don't remember what that was about. Anybody remember that discussion? <laughs> the, the $15 an hour? No, that's the second paragraph. So I'm on the third paragraph where it says discussion was held on the draft updates to the from the Charter Review Commission. And then it said there was further discussion of the appeal process. I, I don't know where that comes from, so I don't don't remember discussion, especially in old business about that with regards to the Charter Review Commission. So. I don't recall either. Um. I don't, I don't either. I think and I think we've captured most of the meeting in the breath, so I would ask to strike that last sentence there. Um, and then on the second page, motion number, the third motion down, which was um, the motion to take things out of order. Uh, please add it to the end of that motion was seconded and passed. And then on first item on the second page, it starts with the word discussion. Uh, my name is misspelled on the third line down to be a K instead of a C. The last item I have is on the second to last section from the bottom and it starts the board and city staff discuss the date of the meeting. Um, the hearing to consider the proposed changes and new items not discussed will continue at that time, I think is what that meant instead of just the change of with to will. Are there any further items that the uh, board would like to mention regarding the minutes? If not, um, let's take a vote on the motion to accept the minutes as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Minutes passes as amended. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to quickly take up the personnel board appointments just to let everyone know. Uh, as we indicated, I indicated Ron has resigned from the board. Um, so we have two open positions. The city council did speak to this at the study session to ask for uh, applications. Um, I do now have, we have the two applications. We have a four, I have Carl's um, and I am expecting two others. So um, what I would like to do if I would ask the board if you guys would be all right with me moving forward with scheduling a date with Jamie to uh, interview those applications that we have um, here in the next couple of weeks so we can fill our board so we're not uh, held up. Would that be all right with you all? That would be great. <laughs> and of course, we would let you know when them are because you can join us. Um, well, yeah, we, we we will have to be very careful because if one other person could join me, otherwise we're going to get into a quorum situation. So I will let you know when we're doing that if you want me to uh, know about that. So uh, Jamie and I will move forward with dates after the holiday, this holiday, uh, to review those items. All right, next I would like to make a motion um, to take the agenda out of order since we have people here who are here for the hearing. So I would ask, um, I, again, I'm making the motion to take the agenda items section under new business sections A through E out of order. Uh, can I get a second? I second that. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. All right, we are down to A under new business. I'm opening the public hearing on this item. Basically, this item uh, for brevity is related to the longevity pay, which will be sunsetting at the end of the year. Is there any further discussion from the board on this item? No. Okay. Any further discussion from staff on this item? No. Okay. Uh, anyone here who would like to speak in favor or opposition to this item? Hearing none, I'm going to close the hearing. I make a motion that we move the item under A, excuse me, that make a motion that we approve. Back me up again, I wrote the language out. Motion that we recommend to the city council this policy change be made. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes and they are recording it. So we wanna make sure we speak up so that the owl hears this. Okay. Moving on just to, to section B regarding definition of terms, um, opening the hearing on that item. Uh, basically, if my understanding is correct, we are just changing two items 
no, excuse me, three items, director, department director to department head, and redefining personnel department to human resources department and human resources director. Is there anything further that the board would like to add? Staff, if you would like to add. Anyone here to speak in favor or opposition to this item? Hearing none, I will close this public hearing. Uh, I will make a motion to recommend to the City Council that item B uh, be changed as written. I second that motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes. Hearing C, we're opening the hearing for the item under bereavement leave. Um, my understanding, brief understanding, is that the bereavement leave is to basically allow those who are in their probationary period to also take advantage of the bereavement leave policy that we offer all other employees. Uh, is there any further discussion from the board? No. Any further discussion from staff? Anyone here to speak in favor or opposition to this item? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. I make a motion that we recommend to City Council this policy section C. This, these changes be made. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes on to D, which is jury leave. I'm opening the public hearing on that item. My understanding under jury duty leave is that those who serve, the employees who serve on jury duty do not have to remit their uh, the de minimis fees or de minimis amounts of money they get, you know, get paid to do jury duty or for parking or anything like that to the city, uh, which I think makes sense administratively. So is there anything further from the board on that item? No. No. Staff? Okay. Anybody here to speak in favor or opposition? Hearing none, I'm closing the hearing. I would make a motion to recommend to city council that this policy under section D, the change be made. I second that motion. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I'm opening the hearing on section E, which is the uh, personnel policy revision for sick leave. Um, this, I'm going to try to sum up this one quickly, please. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. Um, this is basically one of the biggest changes is those who were hired after January 1st of this of 20, well, after December 31st of 2023 will not get a sick leave, a cool payout when they leave the service of the city. Is that the basic gist? Uh, that is one of the stipulations, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So uh, any further discussion from the board? No. From staff? Anyone here in opposition willing to speak in opposition or against? Yes. Hearing none, I will close this, this public hearing. Make a motion to recommend to the city council that this policy under section E be those changes be made. Aye. Uh, Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. That closes all the public hearings for today. Thank you all. All right, um, now we are going to move back up to old business um, to get us back in order. We will take up A, which is the proposed revisions to adoption of plan, which for those following along is on old page 33 and new page 34 for reference. The item here that um, that basically we started to discuss at the previous meeting and had I had questions on was this is A2 where it talks about the city council uh, would not need to approve uh, the, the pay plan that's defined here. Uh, I appreciate receiving the ordinance uh, indicating where that was um, voted on back in June of this sure. past of this year. Uh, but I appreciate that. So I have no further questions or comments about that item. Anyone from the board have any comments on that item? Staff have anything else? Okay. And I would make a motion that we move this to a hearing with proper notification for adoption. Can I get a second? I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Now we're moving on to B, which is article regarding termination. Um, I do have some points on this. So it is old pages 44 through 45 and new pages 46. But I need to look, I'm sorry, my 44 to 45 in that range. Um, and then I have some comments that are on a separate page. So, okay. Um, staff, could you give us just a basic summation of uh, this termination policy one more time? Sure. So um, we are uh, presenting a more specific, well, there's two different pieces to this. Uh, so let's break down uh, the first piece. We're breaking it down to a more specific outline of what that termination policy would look like. Uh, so if we look in the uh, subsection B of termination um, A, we have a clause in there that first allows the human resources department to be involved in the termination process specifically. So if a director uh, requests that an employee be terminated, they have to bring that request uh, to the human resources department. So that's the first step. Um, then the director has the right to take three different steps in that process once they review the documentation that's provided. Um, under step one, they have the right to uh, deny the recommendation for termination. Uh, the second piece is what is already in the policy, uh, but fleshed out just a bit more. Uh, so that is to place the, the person on suspension without pay for a period of up to 10 or a period of 10 days. Uh, to conduct a further investigation. Upon the um, the outcome of that termination, the employee has uh, will be recommended for termination based on that investigation, and that employee then has the right to receive a written statement uh, for the reasons of that action of termination. Um, if that outcome of that investigation does not come to termination recommendation, then that employee will be recommended to be put back into service um, without any record in their personnel file and they will be paid back pay uh, for that time that they're on suspension uh, and that reinstatement will be in, uh, will be in full force. Uh, and the third piece to that is that employee can be terminated uh, for cause uh, since we are an at-will state. Um, and that's based on the documentation that's presented at, at the time. So those are the three pieces to the termination clause um, that's um, broken out. And the second piece, I'm is, sorry, if you don't mind, let's stay with that because sure. the next is the final payouts, if I understand on the next page, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of just stick here for a second um, okay. on this one. Um, I know that you will, uh, you know, as it is approved for the department director to be department head and those words to be capitalized correct. as they are defined. Um, uh, Looked at. Um, I had mentioned this in the previous meeting. So basically, <clears throat> the first look at this is the one, two, or three. You mm -hmm. could either deny, suspend, or terminate. Correct. Correct. Um, so I had thought that adding after one statement, deny the recommendation for termination, comma, or mm -hmm. number two, just whatever, and then or three, which is termination. So that it's clear. I mean, obviously, you're not going to do all three. Correct. So you're doing one of those. Uh, and then I had also suggested, though, listening further, um, that these changes that I'm suggesting have nothing to do with changing the policy that you're change that you're recommending. These are just to make it make sure it reads right. OK. Um, and I provided those to you. Um, for instance, on the second page where it talks about number your option three, which is terminate for cause. Um, I thought that those items two and three right about that termination of classified should be in accordance with standards of the merit system reinstatement. Uh, I kind of understand now more of what you're saying if you have gone with number two, which is we're going to place a hold here. We're going to wait than those items there. So uh, I think now hearing. Hearing hearing what you said and what I suggested. Do you agree or with the changes that I've recommended there, or do you feel that it reads better now that I've heard what you Well, the only the only reason I wouldn't want to put that in that subsection is it may not read as clearly to define what those three different principles are okay. and what that definition would be in terms of what we could do at the time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, because I was thinking, like I said, you know, uh, that little num that little 
double I there on that page. You know, it says termination shall be me. That's kind of like that goes under term. Yeah. Number three, which is termination. But that's only after an investigation is done. Oh, okay. So once the state. individual suspended. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's that's why it's that subset. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. There you go. Okay. And so the point that Butch had brought up at the last meeting about proper notification um, so that someone knows mm -hmm. whether they have fallen into termination. Um, is that covered here? So I think where we were getting a little, uh, where we were getting into the weeds a little, a little bit in in where the confusion was lying, but mm -hmm. we had talked on on the side about this. Okay. Um, we had had to do with when an individual is notified about the suspension versus when they were terminated, right? So if an individual is notified that they're being suspended and it's pending an investigation, they don't. That investigation is just that. The investigation is happening based on the documentation that's being provided. So, in essence, it's unknown what's happening, right? So, that's why there's an investigation pending. So, for us to provide information on termination makes no sense because that individual is not being provided information on termination because that's not determined yet. Okay. Right? Okay. So, that information cannot be provided at that time of suspension. Okay. Does that make but sense? But they know there's an investigation. They understand there's an investigation. Okay. That's being told to them yeah. based and on the policy. And that will be told to them based on the, the proposed changes of the policy. On termination, as it reads and as it will read, that individual shall be provided that information. Okay. And so again, on, I think that this actually uh, provides more. Uh, it does. More That's the intent. Yes. That's the intent. Yes. Correct. Okay. So um, I have. Let's just just looking at this section. Is there any further discussion from the board or staff on just those pieces we just talked about on those two pages? Is there anything from anyone here in the room that anyone would like to add? But I don't know. Maybe would would I be right talking about my concern now or? Is or it's the second part of what you're going to talk about. That's up to me, I'm sure. Um, we're just looking at this termination section right here. We're not talking about final payments, which is. I'm not sure what the second part is, if I may. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Jamie and Adam were kind enough to meet with me after the meeting because I there's a structural change from 10 days notice for suspension. Now it's 10 day notice for investigation. And then after that will come the termination. And my principal, as I studied all my principal concerns or issue is they get a statement of the action, they get a statement of the reason, and that comes after that 10 days upon his decision to fire. And I felt that there needs to be a statement of their appeal rights at that same time. So we discussed back and forth, and I suggested and asked that online I that classified employees who have been recommended for termination shall be entitled to receive a written statement for re for a reason for the action and of their appeal rights. Because there was some discussion about uh, if a lawyer got involved. So it was my sense of fairness, which nobody else has to share, is that there's those three things should be a part of the merit system that, yeah, you know, because the policy procedure are not on the internet. And if you remove them from the office, they're they're not can't get their hands on more of the office. So it's uh, it's my plea that we could add in there that they would be appraised of the action, uh, uh, the reason, and their appeal rights. And I think I think that would benefit the city because that's a clean that's a clean close. And then it, it's up to them to make. But you've not denied them. You've assisted them to know here's how you can appeal this action. Under and, and they do have an appeal right under the chart. So, so it's my it's my plea that I I understood that, that these two uh, the two the Adam and the Chamber were going to review it 
I think their wisdom is not to put it in. It's my plea that you would. Okay. Um, so I'm going to address that real quick to what my thoughts are, sure. and then we'll combine thoughts and then hear from staff. Um, I believe that what what Mr. Carter is referring to is what would be on the piece of paper that you hand them. So that to me is operational. So you're saying, you know, uh, you, Lord Dominic, are you know being suspended for ten days, whatever, to investigate such and such. Uh, you will have the right to appeal. To this go to termination or on the termination paperwork, it says you have this right to appeal. That's where that kind of phrase would go, because we already have covered in here that they have the right to appeal. And to your point, they may not have this. Would that be a correct assumption that that's an operational matter? Um, somewhat. Okay. Uh, but when they are being given this information, when, when an individual is hired, they sign documentation yes. saying that they receive this personal policy. They have the right to review this policy. They have the right to, uh, to acquire this document at any time, even after termination. That is their right to see this document, to acquire this document. That's their right to appeal. That's their right to receive this document. And, and Lindsay can speak to this as well. Mm -hmm. um, their appeal rights are in this document. That's upon termination, the document they'll receive okay. or that they have in their in their hands upon their accumulation of the document. They don't have necessarily a document that's provided to them unless it's requested. And what Butch is referring to in terms of talking about lawyers, this is no different from um, and, and being in, in human resources, you'll understand. The second an employee comes to us upon termination and says anything about a lawyer or uh, anything regarding a lawyer, we as an organization no longer have the right to speak to that about anything. And we no longer have the right to provide them any documents. We cannot provide them any documentation. We are then held liable for that. So if we provide them anything at any time after they say lawyer, we're held liable. So even if we wanted to provide them the personnel policy, we cannot do that. Even if we wanted to provide them any documentation, we cannot do that without their lawyer asking for that documentation. So upon that upon that termination or upon that suspension, any time, we can't do that. So we have to fall back on the document that they sign off on upon that time, and they're required to accumulate that document. That's why we aren't going to provide them with something and why I'm not comfortable putting that in the policy that says they are going to be given something at okay. the time of suspension termination or whatever right. we want to put into the document. Um, that's why I have a little bit of heartburn in doing that okay. um, because it will put the a liability on the city that 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 will put us in, in a pickle, yeah. as well as the employee um, to a point, because I'm afraid they won't understand what they'll be doing to themselves right. when they say those things. Um, that doesn't mean that we're trying to hold something back. That doesn't mean we're trying to do anything but just do the right thing in the right ways. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when the emotions are involved and things are happening, folks don't understand what those rights are and what we can and cannot do, as well as the fact that regardless of what an employee feels is their right and what isn't, that documentation and those that paperwork is company property. And so even though we want to we can show them that information and we do those things, that is our right to hold those documents and to keep those documents. And so upon termination, we just have to be very careful with what that is and we have to be very careful, true, Lindsay, with what our policy says so that we don't put ourselves in the corner as the organization. That's why I want to be very careful in this policy to state what we can and cannot do. But that's also why we have them sign said policy at the beginning of their employment so that they have the right and they know what their rights are based on this. Oh, does that make sense? Yes, it makes okay. a lot of sense. Um, also too, um, these um, are posted on the intranet. Correct. So an employee, let me ask the let me ask a question. If the employee is terminated, are their their access 
it is, it is terminated. Terminated, <laughs> yes. Okay. However, so they can ask if they, they like. Call and ask, and every time right. an employee is uh, suspended, terminated, whatever that is, information is provided to them on how to get a hold of the HR department, and it is in writing, and it is provided to them in several different ways. So that employee always has access to our department, and we always can provide them that information. So that is unless never, they then. But the lawyer, which is then right. they are now being represented by the lawyer, so you cannot speak to them or have to speak through the lawyer. Right. So, OK, um, I wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying, and I appreciate the clarification. Um, so I personally believe then that the language that we currently have in relates as it relates to that item is is adequate. Any other thoughts on that from the board? OK, uh, I'll defer. You, you think it's OK? I do. Yeah. I, I'll refer. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so we're then going to move from the red line section under B to the next page, which is under. And you're. And then, so, yep, yep, sorry. I, got, I have so many. It's no problem. So many comments here, there and everything. OK, so I made a note that this has changed in a new copy and New copy page is in the forties. Okay. So, uh, can you just give us a brief summation of the final payment section? Absolutely. So this is more of a clerical procedural um, federal law. Uh, clarification that we need to put within this, uh, the handbook. So final payments are um, state required, that depending on which state uh, an employee resides in or, or uh, works out of primarily, uh, that state has requirements on uh, when they are supposed to be paid uh, their final paycheck. So what we've done is we've outlined within our uh, policy what the federal guidelines are from the FLSA standard statement. And we've we've made it to where uh, should an employee not work primarily in the state of Missouri, state of Kansas, we just outline it to where we need FLSA standards based on final payments. That's what this is. And then it outlines what those standards are um, from a broad standpoint. So that should we have someone work in various states, we don't have to continually update the policy. So essentially that's what it is, especially as we're working through this new timekeeping system. Um, we'll probably see from time to time updates to our policy uh, with relation to standards that we'll have to set. So that's what this is. It's a procedure and a policy update based on FLSA standards okay. for, uh, for final payments. Okay. Um, one question I, I did have sure. was that it's, but you answered it. So I'm going to let that part. Okay. Yeah. I know when I let you explain, I will have few, fewer questions. So I appreciate that. Um, under procedure, just that one and two there. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't mind it being there. It just seems like it's more of that's what you do in the back end. You know what I mean? If we, if you would like to take some things out, I'm fine with that. We and then let me tend be winded, so we can. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's okay. And it's just because I know, like, for instance, if something changes, you know, in February, you you put in this new system and you find out, oh gosh, we actually need to do this versus that at this time. Then you don't have to come back to us and say, well, we want it three days in advance or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you if if you agree that those procedures that are listed there are just procedures, mm -hmm. I personally recommend we take out the whole section about procedure. Am I miss when I say that? Am I then missing something you would like to have kept in there? The only concern I have, and we could make this an SOP. Um, yeah, we can do an administrative policy on that. So long as we have something in writing, I'm thinking out loud. That yeah, no, no, that's fine. So long because as it's, you know, it's just basically saying that, that works. Sure. You know, the department tells you, you tell them, you get the payroll fixed, and you pay in accordance with the law. Yeah. Okay. Good suggestion. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, is there any discussion from the board on that section regarding final payments? Is there anything from anyone here in the room regarding that section? Yes, sir. I would ask that maybe the board and city staff reconsider removing the procedural part. Um, I think it's an important piece to have in there. 
That way this document is available for everybody to see city staff and the employees as well, and it keeps that timeline in place. For everybody to understand what they're working on. Because if we move it to an administrative policy, the employees may not see those administrative policies. So this is a by having it defined in the policies and procedures, it's clearly written for everybody's notification that this is how this process works. It's just more visible. That's just my opinion. Anyone else? Yes. <clears throat> Perhaps to address that question, we could make a reference in the in the personnel policies to whatever administrative policy we number it as. So we can say, you know, please see or pursuant to administrative policy, whatever. Um, that way, um, any updates could be made in administrative policy. There's a reference here. Administrative policies are available to all city employees, <clears throat> just like the personnel manual is. So maybe that maybe that addresses that concern. Okay. And and um, I think it does address it. However, we don't say in hundreds of other places, you know, SOP such and such or form such and such, you know, um, all of this, you know, the SOPs are inclusive of all the HR. So I, you know, if we add it here, then we then we're going to add it under we how you get your regular paycheck and how you. We can start adding it as necessary. <laughs> Um, since we're updating the policy, um, which I will state again from my perspective, and I, it's not, I, it's not just you know everybody has their opinion on this one. If we add things, like say okay, uh, reference SOP, you know, HR SOP number one two three, then it becomes one two four one day, mm -hmm. and then we have to go back, you know, unless we want to add generically, see the. HR policy regarding final payouts, and then you change it to something else. I don't like to put things into policy that are procedures that could change that then would just create more work for us. And the fact that we might be like, oh gosh, we forgot that we put that there and we have to go back and fix it. So how does the board or anyone else feel with those kind of different pieces we've heard? What are your thoughts? Anything? I agree with him. It should be, in my opinion, would be less confrontational if they had or if a terminated employee had the ability to see the process in which they do receive their last payment. Uh, from experiences, feelings and emotions get intertwined with termination and to uh, alleviate a lot of uh, of that, that the information of this is what's going, what going to happen when you have this, to, this is the time you have to issue your uh, final payment, alleviates a lot of that emotional part of termination and uh, if I may, I will share this. When we, when an individual does exit, we, when we send information via email, we send an email to every uh, employee that signs, terminates, or uh, retires. And there's a detailed email that goes out to every employee with um, an exit packet. And that information is included. If this puts you at ease at all, that says, Here's what your final paycheck uh, is going to include. Here's when you're going to receive it. Here's how you're going to receive it. Here is all of that detailed information is included. Then, that may or may not put your mind at ease. And that I, I just wanted to share that that information is included in that final email. My, just my concern or my question is that standard as again, I can't don't want to use the word guaranteed, but for lack of a better word, is that again, uh, Consistent policy or consistent actions that's always taken at, at every uh, termination. Since I hear that is standard practice, yes. Okay. Then I'll, I'll be here with her. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'll just come back and after the manager Adam North brought up the administrative policy, I think that kind of cleans up some of the language and some of the questions that I had. 
but also that would allow the city to amend any of that policy if on um, any of the FLSA laws changed in the future. It allows them to do that prior to without having to come back to this board and go through the administrative policies and procedures to follow those changes. It allows the city to be to stay up to date on the FLSA law, but it also reference which administrative policy. I think that that's a fair okay. agreement between. And, and I'm going to also just uh, voice again that uh, if we decide to add that language, um, I. I'm going to reiterate that adding something that might change, like policy number one, two, three changes to two, three, four. I don't think that is necessity for that to come back to the board to change that type of thing. So if we're going to add a reference to that, to any policy. In fact, what I would actually maybe recommend instead of referring to a policy is to just state that. You know. The employee who's leaving, to, you know, the whole the categories will receive documentation regarding how their final payouts are calculated and paid. Mm -hmm. And just add a sentence of that, then that puts the check, like you said, that that will happen because we've put it in there, but it doesn't put in specific language that then we have to come to vote to change a policy number or something like that, as well as to. Mike's point that if an FLSA change needs to be made, that's a law change and you have to do that. You can do that in, you know, if it doesn't affect these policies and procedures, you can do that in your policies. Does that kind of satisfy? Does that kind of help if we add a sentence like that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So something to that note to add. Okay. Okay. Is there anything further? Now, I want to clarify before we vote, you are asking us to vote on Article 6, the termination section, which is B, just the, the red line portion, correct? And then the final payout section, correct? Yes, okay. just, the red, just the red line sections in, okay. in, in B. Okay. Oh, yes, because B flows. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good, very good. All right. Anything further from the board? Anything further from staff? If I may, yes. If, uh, if you vote on this to go to hearing, what I can do is make those changes in blue uh -huh. on hearing, and then we can we can just review those at hearing if you'd like. Yes, oh, that'd be great. That will be well, done ten days in advance, and we will have plenty of time to make sure that works if we need to tweak it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I would make a motion uh, to move the. I got so many notes on here. Uh, section B on our business agenda termination to move that forward to a hearing with adequate notification. Can I get a second? I second that motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, if I'm correct now, we are going down to holidays, which is on the new document, page 15. Okay. Staff, will you could just give us a brief explanation and then we'll move on to some items that I have questions on. And the other side. So this um, is consistent with what we're doing with our uh, with our union contracts and with our representative employees. So it's um, it's aligning with the holiday pay payouts for those who do not work on a holiday. Um, and they will receive an eight hour pay, an eight hour uh, holiday pay, regardless of their shift for that pay um, okay. if they do not work that holiday. If they do work a holiday, then they will receive eight hours. I'm sorry, that shift. I'm, I'm letting this up because I'm waiting for I'm stalling. <laughs> To the page. Well, I have questions. That's why you did this before I came. You know, and I'm I'm thoroughly confused on the eight hour plus the eight and a, a time and a half. So eight, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait because I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> but I, I get it. I just don't want to mess it up. Yeah. You know where you're going with this, yeah. 
Yeah. He's stalling too. <laughs> yeah. So we have a variety of employees that work different kinds of shifts, and um, we're doing that more and more uh, as we kind of evolve as an organization. Uh, it's partially a necessity operationally, partially um, a benefit that we offer employees to be more flexible in their schedule, particularly for um, our employees that are parents uh, in the independent school district with the, with the sure. change in the in the school week. We're, we're trying to be accommodating in that regard. Um, so, yeah, this was something that we um, kind of uh, worked through in our in our union uh, agreements, our collective bargaining agreements as we as we go. Um, and so this does bring that consistent. So we're treating uh, employees similarly in, in both in both places. So that does help with my questions that I have. So uh, obviously under section one where you've, you've taken that language and you just basically moved it. Right. I have no problem with that. When it falls on Sunday, when it falls on Saturday, it's Friday, all that totally I understand completely. Um, so under the section that I do have questions on, which is kind of what you've addressed here is I'm first addressing on page 15, the second paragraph that's in the red, mm -hmm. which is to receive aid at their straight hour regardless of their work schedule. Um, and this is for people who are not working the holiday, correct? Correct. Okay, so my question is, is two part. So if I work Tuesday through Friday on a 10 hour day schedule, and Friday's a recognized holiday, I only get paid holiday pay of eight hours, and then if I want to get to 40, I have to pull from my other leave balances. Is that correct? That's correct. Or, or uh, the employee could work an additional, a lot of times managers will allow employees to work additional time. Like a comp week. time type yeah. thing. Um, you know, you flex it in that week. Okay. Uh, otherwise, the problem would be that if we would give employees, you know, the full, the full time of holiday pay for their shift, they're going to end up with, uh, extra more holiday pay than other employees in the organization. So it creates a uh, inequity. And, and I do understand that. I was, yeah. I was just thinking about on both sides again, like mm -hmm. the employee is like, okay, I'm still working 40 hours for the city and you've agreed to let me work that, which is 10 hours. Um, and, but I want to recognize the holiday myself too. You know, it's whatever holiday it is. In my mind, it's like I I I I would give you the ten hours if you weren't you you weren't making it a holiday. You're making it a holiday, therefore that means I mean I guess they can still come in and work. I guess is that the answer? Well, you could come in and work, which I don't think that's a you know it's not a very nice thing. You know, like well if you wanted your full pay, you have to come in. Um, well, a lot of times our operations would be closed, so that would right. be an option for employees. Right. So so if it's closed, you know, like say on whatever day, Veterans Day is on Monday, and I work on Monday through Thursday schedule, mm -hmm. it's closed. Mm -hmm. So if it's closed, that's not me closing the building. I would be giving you 10 hours if I was there. So should I not get 10 hours of holiday pay? Because no. then, uh, then that adds up to your 40. Yeah, no, you shouldn't. Because again, if- You shouldn't, is that what you said? You should not, should not. employees okay. should not. Again, because that would then mean that at the end of the year, depending on, um, if that how many times that were to occur, then uh, you know how forget how many holidays we have. Sixteen. So sixteen holidays. That employee would end up with uh, thirty-two more hours of holiday pay right. that year than any other employee. Correct. But so, that holiday. So pay you got to think about you got to think about our holidays are you know what's well let me do some quick math here. Sixteen times eight. We have one hundred twenty-eight hours of holiday pay. In the year. Okay, that's okay. what you get as an employee. That's your benefit. Okay, right. when you if you take 16, 16 holidays times eight, that's one hundred twenty-eight right. hours. Okay? okay, if you give an employee ten hours of holiday pay, they now have one hundred thirty hours of holiday pay, where everyone else in the organization has one hundred twenty-eight. Okay, I did not realize that we defined like here's your bucket. Right. I'm trying to use that as a way to illustrate. Why it's problematic to give them ten hours of holiday pay yeah. on a that works a specialized shift. 
Yeah, so so my 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 team works 10 doors. Right. Let's use that for well, this or in this for you. Yeah, I know what you meant. <laughs> you got them in here for four hours at work. I mean, so I have them work 40 <laughs> hours a day. Um, so so this week, let's use this week where we have two holidays, right? Right. So uh, my m the employees that work in this department, they'll work three days this week. Okay. And instead of working 10 hours, though these days they're only working the eight hours. So oh. they've shifted their schedules to only work eight hours for the three days because they're receiving eight hours Thursday and Friday. Okay. So they've adjusted their schedules for eight hours Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday so that they can receive the eight hours Thursday and Friday. Okay, that makes sense. So they can have the 40 hours this week. And that okay, so and and your employees are all salaried, correct? They are uh not all of them. No. Okay. I have I have one that is currently. Correct. Okay. So in that regard though, the the same. Doing the same. Okay. okay. So it but if they weren't to do that, then they would have 40 hours or they would have extra two hours i'm sorry they would have they my, their math is hard <laughs> they would have, especially girl math that's a new thing yeah they would have six extra hours so okay so they understand so they would work the first if they decided to stay on their tens they worked 10 10 10 on monday tuesday wednesday mm -hmm. for 30 mm -hmm. and then they get paid eight and eight no nope, they'd get paid if we stayed with the current policy they'd get paid 10 10 so they'd have 20 hours for Thursday and Friday. So they'd have 50 hours for the week. So they'd have actually have, see, you screwed me up. They have 10 extra hours for the week. If we were to stay with the current policy. So they would add 10 extra hours for the week. So where's the current? Explain to me where that says in the current policy. Maybe I'm not. It's not defined. Okay. Okay. So that's the correct. Precedent that we've used. Okay. Correct. Okay. I just and want to make sure because have, I had not seen that, so I wanted. We to haven't know. set a precedent in certain departments. Use it a certain way, and so we okay. have to define it again because a it needs to be defined for our new timekeeping system, right? Right. Right. And also we have to define it because we have to understand what overtime rules we have to use from an FLSA standpoint. Right. We have to understand how we have to budget all of the things, right? Right. And we have to be consistent for our employees to understand what their rights are. No, no, I totally agree with that. Okay, so, so, so but, but it, it makes the most sense, and it's fair to do it consistently throughout the organization. So, if we, if we're saying you get this amount of hours if you're not working across the board, and then we allow our employees to flex their time on those holiday weeks to make for the forty hours, that just makes the most sense. Now, if you're working on those holiday hours, we want to make right. sure we define that as well. Yeah, which is another thing because I have correct. I have a question. But does that make a little more sense to you now? It makes sense. I just want to make sure that you're, you communicated this to your oh, absolutely. four tens. They're you doing know, it right now. Yeah. That, that is what they're doing this week. Yeah. I just want to make sure that that's every department who has flex employees that, follows that. The that's leadership. the purpose of this. Yeah. Is they're but, doing, but, we're doing it in practice right now. This is memorialized. Okay, but you're you're doing the part in practice in here. You're putting the part that says you're going to get paid like this week, 16 hours of holiday pay for Thursday, Friday. Yep. Does it say in here that then I make the choice if I want to flex or not? So that's a that's well, a partially that's a discretion of the of the manager and the department director how they want to. Handle right. It. Which then that's where my question comes. The piece of this has to be determined by if the organization if it's open if we're open or not. Right, because the holiday is a right. holiday. Right. So if if we're closed as an organization, that's what determines that individual working or not. No, no, I yeah, and I and I sense? I understand that point. Yeah. I um say somebody works for instead of HR, they work for ABC department, uh -huh. right? And they're not represented and sure. you know, all that or whatever. And they've been working four tens at the agreement of their department head. Um and this week, they they said, okay, look, you know, I'm getting paid eight and eight, so I just want to work eight, eight, and eight. Uh -huh. That's okay, right? Department head or department A, B, C, or whatever. Uh -huh. okay. I don't want yes, I don't want it to be denied. With the so it needs to be up to the departments to decide how they run their departments because right. some some departments 
need people to be working 10 hour shifts right. for right for operational reasons you know if there's a plant operation or anything like that okay so it really is driven by the department you know when we work when we if we enable employees to work different kinds of shifts it's a benefit where you know, there's flexibility that goes right between the department and the employee uh, especially if it's not operationally necessary okay so during weeks where there's holidays there needs to be some flexibility in both parties to figure out how to how to properly compensate and account for those hours during that week okay i i if that is and of course we'll find out when we you know a see if we have any discussion here and b if we have any discussion at a hearing i i personally could just foresee someone saying you're only giving me 16 hours so okay so let me ask you this so say that that three tens is necessary mm -hmm. Like this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have to have you in for 10. So they get 30 hours plus 16. So they are going to go into overtime. And that's okay. On, that's okay. It depends on the, the department, but perhaps. Right. So. perhaps yeah. right. And it depends on your salary. Obviously, you don't have overtime and all things. Those well, things. salary, it's, it, yeah, I mean, you get paid. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking more about employees in that regard. Right. I just want to make sure that we don't have a situation where somebody says, you know, I, I don't want to complain. You guys have to face in a complaint from an employee who says, I somehow got shortchanged my 40 hours. Mm -hmm. There's no way an employee will get shortchanged 40 hours if there's a holiday week. That's not a thing. It might they'll be that they, they have to work more. Or if they have to work more, then they'll get they'll the get holidays going to be oh. counted towards overtime. That's okay. just a thing that okay. that we're going that we we have been and we will always be. Okay. Okay. So that's, make, that's not a thing. So we're not shorting anybody. We might absolutely not. Okay. Okay. That is how I should have asked the question. <laughs> um, because then my other question was, so if someone works four tens and then the holiday falls on a Friday, they're supposed to get eight hours for that day. So if they've already put in Monday through Friday, it's Thursday, mm -hmm. four tens, mm -hmm. Friday is a holiday, you're gonna give them eight hours for this policy. If they put in four tens? Yes. Then yes, they would get eight hours overtime. Right, they're an hourly employee and yeah. they had to work the four tens. The answer okay. is yes, they'll have to get eight hours overtime. Okay. As an hourly employee. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that we're also then addressing the fact that we may, with our, I totally agree with this flex thing. I think it's awesome. It's way, a lot of employers are moving and we're glad we're moving that way. Mm -hmm. So it may be that you end up paying, but you're okay with that piece. Okay. And it's, it, as Adam said, this is already in practice. So this is, this is something employees should be used to at this point. Okay. This is just putting, this is memorializing. Fine. Okay. okay. Um, so then, um, okay, so just sticking with that first part, so the people who are not working the holiday that we've just discussed, is there anything from the board that you would like to mention about that section? No. Anyone in the audience? Okay. Hearing no, no discussion, let's move down to four, which is the people who are required to work on holidays. Um, I think this, let me reread because what we've said may unconfuse me. <laughs> okay, so if I am required to work a holiday, and again, I understand this is outside of CBAs and things like that, if, if I work a holiday. This to me reads, I will get eight hours of straight pay plus eight hours at time and a half. Do you really mean you will get eight hours at time and a half? Because that sounds to me like you're getting straight yeah. plus time and a half. I don't know that that's what you mean. Um. So I'm trying to go through my memory bank on no, that's all right. yeah, I get collective it. bargaining agreements, but that's consistent with how we compensate in the collect in our collective bargaining agreements. Um, so they get two and a half times so holiday. Half. Um, okay. They, you know, maybe we bring someone in on Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. you know, that's so no, no, I yeah. totally get it. I um, paramedic, so, I get it. Uh, Remember. So yes, I, I'm kind of 
Yeah. 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 So, um, so I'm, so I'm remembering this. And again, this is, yeah. um, that is the intention. This is to uh, where we can, you know, and then there are differences. We strive to, um, treat, you know, treating employees similarly, whether you're represented or non-represented to ensure sometimes it doesn't always happen. Sure. Uh, but this is one of those cases where we try to, we're trying to be consistent. Okay. Uh, so non-represented employees are enjoy some of the similar benefits okay. in this case. And so, and, 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 and I will, and that makes sense because I was not a, a familiar with the two and a half. Now, if, so let's get, let's take a situation where the person has to work a 10 hour shift on Thanksgiving for the sake of argument. So we're going to give them eight hours of holiday and then they're eight hours at straight and then we're going to give 10 hours at time and a half. For how hours actually work. Okay, and that's how the bargaining agreements work. Some of them may be different. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and, I, and again, I'm just trying to make sure that. that but um, yeah. this was just the language that was uh, bargained with uh, communication workers. Okay. Okay. Then that makes sense to me, and that that's what you were trying. I was not thinking that's what you were trying to convey, but it is. Yep. Okay. Anybody on the board have any further discussion? Anybody in the room? Very good. I would make a motion to. Where are we at? <laughs> Sorry, I got to get back on my agenda. So we're still under termination, correct? B. So to. Oh, nope, no. Holiday. 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 Word of way down. Let's get my stuff together here. Here we go. Holiday. Okay. So uh, section F of under new business, I would make a motion to move those policy revisions to a public, to a hearing with adequate notice. Can I get a second? A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yes, of the agenda. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was recorded. We're good. Very good. All right. Section G of the agenda proposed changes to extension of probationary. So old is page seven. And new is page eight. You guys want to go ahead and start a brief discussion while I head over to that sure. shore? Please. Page nine, excuse me. It's, it's on page nine of the following in the new poll. Well, I guess it's eight and nine because we're. I apologize. It's on page eight. It is page eight. eight. My apologies, please. Subsection two. Yeah. So just a brief description of this is. Sure. So um, if we're looking at extension of probationary period, we're really just cleaning this up just to hear. Um, in subsection A, you know, we're talking about the. Uh, the extension and having the discretion of that extension um, after six months in, in B. It really outlines if an employee is absent for more than 30 days, then there's an there's a required extension. That that kind of pigeonholes things. Uh, the discretion is is allowing for that, right? And and that 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 needs to be a discussion as opposed to a, a oh, requirement. Okay. Right. And okay. so to take that out is really that's that's what's doing that for us. It's providing that is providing us to have that discussion as opposed to having that. Um, because there's so many things that could happen in that regard, right? And if an individual is gone, you know, there may be a death in the family. Something can happen, but there also may be a point where an individual is just gone for those 30 days. And in that in that probationary period, it's that's the reason they need to be um, really from duty. So we just need to take that out and have more of a discussion about that um, and, and make that a discretionary decision based on management um, discussion as opposed to having that immediate extension based on 30 days of absenteeism. That's um, what, what subsection B is all about. That makes sense to me. Is is there uh, any comments from? No. Um, and I guess also to. No, nope, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Uh, any discussion for anyone in the room? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I would make a motion on section G of. 
to move that to a hearing with adequate notification. Can I get a second? I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Are you saying aye, Carl? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I can't hear you. <laughs> we got to make sure the owl picks up that and I can't hear very well at all. Okay, very good. We'll move that. We move past that. Next is section eight of the agenda, which is on page nine. Um, this piece is more of just a cleanup um, of the performance appraisal piece. Um, just to outline what those different sections are, since we have uh, different um, pieces to what probation is in the different departments. Just outlining what that three, six, nine, and one year probationary period is for each of our different departments public service, general service. Um, I just wanted to outline that in the in the policy for everyone to understand since that really wasn't outlined based on uh, the other areas within the, within the policy. So that's what that table outlines there. So we're just E1 is the change that we're considering here. Very correct. Any comments from the board? No. Any comments from anyone in the room? Hearing none, I would make a motion to move H on the agenda to a hearing with proper notification. Can I get a second? A second. All in favor say aye. Hi. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Nepotism. Got to get to that page. Page 10. 10. Oh, thank you. So, if anybody finds it, for me. okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> this has changed a few times. So, I'm back and forth on two pieces of paper on this one. Okay, so we haven't had much discussion on this particular point at all. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I haven't reviewed this it much either. I mean, <laughs> um, so we've had quite a few points of discussion with the coalition on this piece. Okay. Um, Chad left the room. I can't believe it. Um, so with regard to the nepotism policy, um, we had quite a few uh, points of discussion on this. I'm not sure where we want to start. I mean, first, the, the table. Let's just, let's just tackle that. We cleaned up the table so people could actually read it within the handbook. <laughs> and let me make a suggestion to that point too. Sure. Lose the table altogether. <laughs> we talk about related by blood, which, which is also the same as post sanguine, which I can't ever say. I can say exsanguination, but I can't say that word. Um, oh, why do we need a table? Uh, we don't need to know if it's a first, second, third, or fourth degree because any of those are related by blood. Right. The only reason I would suggest keeping it, and this is just a suggestion on my part, it's, it's kind of a, it, it's a, it's a easy place for folks to look to see if it's included or not. Um, that's the only reason that I would suggest keeping it, but it, you know, that's for you all to discuss. I know what that is, but I live and breathe this. So yeah. if an employee wants to look this up and see what, you know, what that looks like, for quick reference, that's something to, um, to be able to do. Again, that's that's for you all to discuss. And Lindsay, you may have you know insight there that you want to share, but only that it's the fourth degree is you know it doesn't change depending on which city you're in, so you can always Google it and see the table. So it's it's accessible, I think, but I don't think it hurts to leave it in here. Um, and some of the things that I think about, like you know, as you indicated, like somebody um, looking at this to see, uh, because if we are we are allowing this is also pertains to by law relatives right mm -hmm. so if if i look at this and say i am a, I, I work for the city right and i have now gotten married and my step child has is working for the city that's going to create that's going to invoke this, not going to, you know, whatever we yes. do with it. Yes. But we don't say children, stepchildren, adopted children. It just says children. Do you, see, do you see, like, that's just one example of, well, I went here and it says child. That's not my child. I just married this woman and now that's my stepchild. But it doesn't say that my stepchild. It does say it above. It says by law. Mm -hmm. That's up to you all. I, it really, I, you know, again, I don't think it and this is confusing as it was before with that 
algorithm chart, I guarantee you don't worry about that. And as a person who works in DNA, I'm like, you're right. These things aren't going to change. I mean, this is either you're related by blood, you're related by affinity, you're related by law, all of that. Whatever title you give to that person, I don't think we need to relist all of that out. Does the board have any thoughts on that? And that's just one piece we're talking about. Just I say just lose the table. Okay, hearing no concern about that. Let's um, let's keep that in mind when it's something here. So if we kind of go back, um, it's hard for me because it's changed. So we're saying oh, that line has been addressed. The city. Okay, so now we're saying you just discouraging nepotism by prohibiting any city official or employee from participating in the hiring of a relative. So we got the issue of, so right there just in that paragraph is about hiring because that is number one, nepotism in hiring decisions. Okay, so since there's <laughs> there's no A's and ones there, so actually what you're basically saying is it will state the city discourages nepotism by prohibiting A from hiring, the hiring thing. Okay, that makes sense to me now. Mm -hmm. there's, it's going to come together as one sentence instead of all these individual pieces because there was a piece that was knocked out. Okay, then I would suggest definitions to the top of this nepotism thing. Like, do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So move definitions to one, put nepotism in hiring second. The people know what all the evidence are before they even get to what are we talking about? Okay. Then okay, so then also another point I had on can't say the word, someone pronounced it for me, consanguinity. Sanguination is when somebody bleeds out, but oh, it's co how do you say that? It says refers to the blood relationship between people from some common ancestor. Uh, I just laugh because I think of common ancestors like way back when. Uh, but com uh, consanguine, of course, sanguine refers to blood, and we already have by blood, so I didn't, I'm not sure why we need by blood and sanguinity. That's good enough. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't think we need I don't think we need that word in there. I think if you're gonna say by blood, then it's by blood. Do you only think would it cover it if we took that out? I don't think it hurts to have both definitions. But it seems duplicative to me. Like are we like let's think of an example where we're 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 questioning something right where we have a question with two employees who might be related blah blah, blah. you know are we going to say are you going to say consanguinity or are you going to say well you're related by blood there's there's no difference in my in the, the in my personal job in dna there's no difference between related by blood and related by blood <laughs> so i my only recommendation would be to use the same term throughout. If you use the word consanguinity in there to add the definition, but if either or, or right. both. But. Right. So I would personally suggest just take that word out of there. I don't, most people don't know what that word means. And it just truly just refers back to by blood. That would be my suggestion. Anyone in the room have a point about that they want to make? Yeah. Okay. Okay, no, no, you're fine. I was looking at you. Okay, just so I just think, let's just take out one thing to make it a little less. Um, and then, is that all the definitions? Those all that. I say take the pair of the box out. Okay, so now we're down to. The section is three now, supervision by employees. So no employee shall be employed, motor transferred, or reinstated. So the employee will 
directly or be supervised directly, which includes employee being subordinate to a situation. So, so basically the first sentence of the supervision by relatives is we don't want anyone directly supervising something that would, that falls into a nepotism question, correct? Then just so just that just that first sentence, right? That's the intention of that. Correct. And, and you can you can, you know, I'm gonna hold you down to that. If you need to restate after what I say next, which is um, so then I see the part that was added about an emergency situation. And if it ever happened where there where there was a direct supervision between two employees who would you know come into question under nepotism, um, if you can't make that not happen, mm -hmm. then you would all that would be subject to an investigation. OK, so here's my question. So if we have an emergency, if a tornado hits and we need everybody, you know, full on public safety, we need them all. But we do know there are people that are related to each other in the public safety field who in an emergency. I don't know. I mean, of course, you could try to avoid it, right? If you can't, it's an emergency. Emergency by definition means get it done. I don't know why you would then spend time after the fact saying, oh, we got to investigate this. Why did we let Battalion Chief A supervise his daughter? Mm -hmm. That was an emergency. Okay, that's what we do in an emergency. Why? If, I think that if you want to, I think maybe what the question they're trying, that's trying to get to here is, has there been a situation where someone has been favored over someone else in the case of an emergency? Is that what we're trying to address here? Yeah. Okay, so kind of explain to me why we would investigate. We have an emergency. We've done everything we can to avoid it. We can't. We have to have people on the streets, whatever job they do. Mm -hmm. Why we? Why would we investigate all those situations? So let's take the matter of, of the police department. Okay. Okay. So we have a situation where an individual um, is a, a a sergeant is in charge of a patrol unit and. There's an emergency situation where the sergeant is not able to handle that situation. They're they're um, they're shot. Let's just say that, right? Okay. And so um, that patrol officer is then having to take direction from the captain that's now on scene, or uh, the major favorite. that's on scene, whatever the case is, or a different sergeant. That individual is related to that sergeant major captain that comes on scene okay. that needs to be avoided at all costs because that individual is then taking orders from said relative right. who then may have favor over based on the emergency situation that is what we're trying to avoid is in an emergency situation those Perspective feelings that may come into the situation mm -hmm. are avoided at all costs before that situation even happens. Right. And that takes care of in the first part of that paragraph where it says you're going to make every effort to not have this happen. Right. I agree with that. And so what we're what we're trying to do here is have contingency plans in place for those situations to not happen in emergency situations either. So what we want to do is have, okay, if this patrol unit as a situation where said person in charge is not able to be in charge, what is your contingency plan? And that's a that would be a procedure of the department. Correct. Not of that. There's no reason to, reason to investigate that. That's a like the department should say if we have that situation or any situation similar to that where we have now fallen into an emergency. Right. And that's the point we're doing. That's the point right. that we're referring to here in the situation. Right. My part is the question of all this investigation afterwards. So the pre-approved practices is what we would want to investigate. Why weren't there pre-approved practices in place before? Right. So that is something that should happen. And the department should have should put that in place. 
And you can do that with policies of the department. But if we don't have that in policy, we can't allow, we can't determine if that's done or not without it being, without us saying, hey, we need to be able to have some sort of determining factor to even look into this after the fact, right? To say, right, and that's where I'm, I'm, where I'm saying you guys can make sure the departments have that, right? I mean, um, you would have, you know, you would have, if we don't, over have all it, the department heads, we don't have it in policy. There's no way for us to have that. Right. And that should be, I think that should be a department policy. No, okay. I think we're talking about two different things. Okay. okay. So in here, I agree that making the statement that you should make every attempt to not have this happen. I get that. Then they, the department should put in a policy that says, Okay, should we come down to an emergency situation where this happens and this happens? We are going to check relationships to see who and who should not be. See, again, this gets back to me in an emergency. Like, emergency is an emergency is an emergency. <laughs> but you have a policy and you're saying, you know, Adam Dustman's like, okay, who can we send? Well, we can send uh, Major Smith because he's not related to anybody on that patrol. Mm -hmm. That he's got he's got direction that he should make sure that that doesn't happen to the best of his ability, and if he's like I can't make that happen I like I have nobody else I got to get somebody at that scene right now I can't afford sending Major Smith because even though he's related, well then that should be part of the policy is you've worked through this, you know thought process mm -hmm. now it's just an emergency get somebody out there mm -hmm. now if if afterwards somebody files a complaint and says oh well. Major Smith got, I'm not trying to pick out the need, but just an example. Major Smith gets on scene and he let his nephew be relieved early and everybody else had to stay because, you know, I think because they're related, he gave him favoritism. Or his nephew did something wrong, but the major didn't call him out on it, we think because they're related. That's a situation to investigate, but that's a complaint based investigation. So I think investigation here would, would mean you know, as senior leaders, we all have to justify our decisions at some point in time, right? Sure. I need to be able to demonstrate my rationale for any for anything we do. Right. Um so <laughs> this is not an investigation like what you know, this is more hey, after everything's said and done, the dust settles, mm -hmm. please outline, you need to outline the decision making that went into why this occurred, okay? So documentation of it. And then after okay. that is, okay, if, if it did occur, is this preventable in the future? Because this is not a, it's not a great situation when this happens. Right. But sometimes it does, and you got to deal with it as it comes, right? right. Um, so I think that's really what that means here is, um, after the fact, you need to document what happened, you know, why, you know, what, what, what we consider this, this, you, and this, you right. went through. So then, and it is a very real concern um, and uh, circumstance where uh, an employee after the fact that may not have been involved in the situation right. may file a complaint about that. Right. Um, and then you're saying the you documentation's know, in place saying and this this correct. protects our you know this okay this ensures you know this provides one layer to make sure our senior leaders are kind of going through that thought process okay. and then protects them protects Those the, employees. the employees all the employees involved whether it's someone right. that's a relative or not a relative that's filing a complaint so it really covers all everybody's basis but really it's it's a way to demonstrate for our senior leaders to show this is the process we went through. And this is, you know, this is why we did do we, the we process. Did, why we did what we did. Okay. So um, can we change that wording somehow? But investigation to me is a very formal sounding term. Mm -hmm. You know, investigation is you're going to write up what happened. You're going to write up what happened. We're going to come in here. We're going to look at all of this. We're going to go through all this. Who are they supposed to submit that to? Who's going to review it? Can we just change it to, uh, you know, if this is not possible, then um, all decisions resulting from that situation should be documented. Contemporary and submitted to, you know, you to, a review of pre approved practices. That and then what happened? Yeah, just, it, I, I don't like I totally get the the the, the documentation part of it. 
but then turning all of it into what sounds to me like an, a formal investigation, you're going to bog yourself down if every time we have an emergency situation. And I and the other thing is, how are you defining necessarily emergency? You know, like emergency to me is a tornado blows through town and we don't have time to like even then really truthfully, like this is just me personally. I don't want the department heads to be spending time like remind me who is related to who again. And can I put that BC with that company or, you know, like in an emergency? That's OK. If you if, if they at least have to think through it. And document it. Well, they shouldn't think through it because there again, there's a reference to a pre-approved. Right. They should have the practices. Yeah. Practices. That's, that's what I'm saying. That, so, that's their policies yeah. in place. So whenever. Yeah, I think you, I think we're all getting hung up on the word investigation yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't, I so there's a pre-approved practice. Right. An incident occurs. Okay. Emergency. Mm -hmm. um, the department director, chief, whatever they are. Uh -huh. Um, after the fact, submits some sort of documentation that says, okay, here's our pre-approved practices. This is why we deviated from this. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yep. So let's That's just change that second part then. If this is not possible, then any decisions related to will be documented and I summarized it. What's that? I summarized it. Thank I'll you. Change it. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that just sounds better. It just sounds like every we're going to be investigating everything, and I don't want everybody to spend time investigations. Documenting, absolutely. I get it. Okay. Does anybody on the board have any discussion about that? Anybody in the room have anything they want to say about that? Go ahead, Butch. Would the word formal subject to a formal review? That would that's address it? Uh, for, to me, I don't think there should be. Yeah. Okay. I, let's 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 hold on that. Let's get some wording change on that. Let me um, add one last thing. Yeah. Uh, if you remove consanguinity, will you leave it in the table? The, the word consanguinity is that oh, the, the table, mm -hmm. the table kind of outlines. So I think that makes it clear from all my memory it was always the fourth degree, and it was hard to figure it out. But the charter does say say the content quantity the and charter does yeah. yeah and i'm just wondering if it should if you should at least leave it in the in the table I, as much as i don't want to no. up against where you're at okay or, as, uh, i have not reviewed the charter in terms of this mm -hmm. so um just let me check the time okay we are what are your time frames yeah. what's your heart stop to me uh, 11. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let me. Let's do this. Um, we. I'm going to make a motion eventually to if we're to move this to the next meeting for further discussion based on some of what we discussed. But I think we have just a few more minutes to get a few of these things. We can compare to the charter. We can, you know. And I can look, see if I can get more comfortable with having two words that mean, you know, the same there, which is, it's it's extra and that's fine, but we want to keep it concise and correct. So let's go on uh, to talk about under marriage. Um, okay, so I have to compare it to my old language. I think nepotism needs to be capitalized, is created under section three above. With the lease seniority will be terminated unless the arrangements are made within 30 days. Okay, and so when you're saying within 30, you say within 30 days of appointment, you mean within 30 days of marriage? I'm into the position on marriage where a situation of nepotism is created. This also gets a little, it also gets a little fuzzy for me too, because um, if two people were dating mm -hmm. before they got married, that's a nepotism issue. Okay. Based on our definitions. Right. So you're, where are we not referring to marriage of two people 
who should have already reported that they were dating and therefore cannot supervise one or the other because they both work here compared to a situation where Bill has worked here for years. He's dating Jill and who's never worked here. Mm -hmm. They get married and Jill decides to come to work here. Right. Or they already are married and Jill decides to come work here. Which if they are. But okay. So if Bill and Jill already work here, they're not supposed to be supervising each other as dating. Right. So if they get married, nothing has changed. They still shouldn't be supervising each other. Does, does that make him saying it better that way? I mean, unless, you, you know, love at first sight, let's get married today. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you see where I'm kind of. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm trying to apply. Where does that apply? You know what I mean? So let's let's consider that. Let's let's think about let's have that as a point to think about before our next meeting. Because again, I think it's probably something that leaving it in there is maybe a little duplicative, but not you know like it's not gonna hurt, I guess. Well, maybe okay, maybe here's a situation. Okay, this is a situation. I misrepresented before. Let's say this. Let's say Bill works for water and Jill works for fire and they're dating. That's fine because they're never going to supervise each other in two different apartments. Mm -hmm. Now they get married. Now that's when, no, that's still not a situation because they're still in different apartments. So unless they were simultaneously getting married and Jill was trans transferring over to water i think the word upon is making you is, is creating problem in your mind yeah because i'm like i think if we just say in in the situation of marriage which is in, which is covered by our first section because marriage is by law right i i just don't know that we need it really to even address the questions you know what i mean to avoid it, addressing the questions i don't know that we need it but in the sake of time, let's let's consider. Let's I'll make a note to think about that. If you guys think about that, think about that, and see if we can come up with a situation where we need that. Sort of that. Um, and then also the part about well, and this is corrected because I had a problem with the person with the most with the least seniority will be terminated unless other arrangements are made. So. Because to me, that's they need to make the decision themselves as to how they want to handle it. You figure out how you're going to handle it, or we're going to handle it. Maybe is you know if we have to handle it, it'll be the least. But if you want to work with us or work together, then okay. So let's consider whether we need that section or not, and go with that. Um, and then it says, uh, city administration will make every effort to avoid termination in these circumstances, and we work with the impact employee to you know. I think even though that part appears to be under marriage. I actually think maybe it should be like number five. Because so you're talking about nepotism. And then we take out marriage. You guys are if, what you're basically saying is if there's an issue of nepotism that comes up, we're going to we're going to work to get this figured out. And I think that should be a general statement, whether I don't necessarily think it should just be under the marriage thing. That's just a thought. Um, elected officials, no person shall commence employment in any position within the city who's a relative. I don't have any heart done with that. Does anybody have any thoughts on that piece of it? Okay. Um, and then just one last part to think about. I'm not sure that we need the effective date part at all because the effective date is the effective date that once the council approves the change, it goes into effect, right? We don't say that about every other section of when this goes into effect. Would you agree? It goes into effect when when it's passed. 
And then of course you would notify people that we've had a change in this policy and whatever. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that we table uh, item I on the agenda discussing the nepotism policy to the next meeting. Can I get a second? I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Also in the, in the uh, respect for time, I make a motion that we move item J, drug and alcohol policy discussion to the next meeting. Can I get a second? I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, next meeting dates. How soon do you need us to meet? And we can work from there. We would normally have a regularly scheduled meeting this second Friday in December, the 8th. We can, um, the rest of these items are not necessarily pressing like the, the ones that we had the hearings for today. Okay. So I think we'd be comfortable uh, waiting till the after in 2024 to reconvene. Okay. Um, that would give us a little bit more time to work with, you know, other stakeholders on the drug and alcohol policy. Right, because like, there's a lot there. I yeah. tried getting through so, that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that gives us a little time to work on those other things and then okay. bring them back to you, hopefully, with uh, you know, additional feedback and input from the okay. Now, do you need on items F, well, items, a and B from old business and F, G, and H that we voted to move to a public hearing. Are any of those things that we need to have a public hearing on before the next year? No. Holidays, none of that? Okay, so we're really good with waiting until yep. yes. January. Let's take a break. And yes. they, we okay. handled all the business we need to for... Okay, good. <laughs> that will also get us time to get more people under our board so Absolutely. we can have more input and less of a scare on... Uh, and again, we don't having, of course. we don't need to meet just on Fridays. So if okay. that helps with scheduling, okay. we're we're happy to meet on on different days. Um, I will also ask the group to um, people who have been either recommended to me or I have reached out to who are considering serving on the personnel board. Um, some of them are still currently employed, um, and asked if we can meet after hours. Uh, I don't. I'll take input. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can do that. That'd be good with you. And perfectly fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I personally like the idea because I think it gives people who work during the day, like it. There's people who work shifts, so they're not gonna, they can't, you know, make it. But give more opportunity for personnel to join the meetings, employees. I say that. Yeah. So. With that being said, let's presume we are not going to meet till after the first of the year. We will work on, Jamie and I are going to work on getting appointments scheduled with people who are interested in serving on the board. Then once we have those people, we will move through that process, which we may want to call a special meeting if we interview those people to make a vote of the group whether or not to recommend those people to the council so that the council can then proceed with what they're doing. But that would be the only topic we can take up at a special meeting with adequate notice. So let's not set a, an appointment for January now, not knowing exactly who we're going to have and what their scheduling requirements. Let's just know that we're going to meet in January as soon as we know. So as soon as we have closed these interviews with people that we would consider then I will ask to call a special meeting, you know, just a personnel board meeting. We will have one item on the agenda, and that will be to discuss the recommendation because we have to vote on that recommendation for that to go to council. Then it has to go into a study session, and then it has to go onto a regular agenda, which is going to make this push us. I'll just say it's going to push us. I'll make what I can have, ha what I can influence to happen with the council to see if they can take up an item um, outside of the. Uh, extenuating rules regarding submitting uh, agendas. Does that sound good? All right, anything else? All right, I make a motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you all.